Hey everybody, Dr. Schultz with the Centeno Schultz Clinic with another weekly update. We're continuing our series on thoracic spine, and today what we're going to be talking about is thoracic spine hemangiomas. So thank you for checking in, and let's get started. So the goals of today's presentation are to review what in the world is a hemangioma, to review what is a thoracic spine hemangioma, the most common symptoms the radiographic findings, the treatment options, and other coexisting thoracic spine disorders. So let's get started. So what in the world is a hemangioma? It's basically a benign tumor composed of abnormal blood vessels. You and I have every, and everyone else have seen them, and they're depicted here in the picture to the right. They can occur anywhere, but most commonly they occur on the face, the scalp, or the back. But they also can they occur in the spine. And again, a thoracic spine hemangioma is a benign tumor. It's composed of abnormal blood vessels that actually occupy the thoracic vertebrae. And remember, the thoracic vertebrae are the boning, bony building blocks that make up the spine. They're the bones that stack one on top of the other and they're depicted here in the right, in the arrow to the right. So it's a benign tumor inside one of these building blocks. So a vertebral hemangioma is a benign tumor of the thoracic spine. It has a prevalence of 10 to 12 percent in the general population. It accounts for 2 to 3 percent of all spinal tumors. And here's the good news: most of them are asymptomatic. They're just incidental findings that you find on MRI or CT. There is a prevalence of female to male of approximately uh, 1 to 1.5. And the most common place for hemangiomas in the spine is the thoracic area, hence the talk today. So what are the most common symptoms of a vertebral hemangioma? It's pain, just like you thought. And the and the actual sources of the pain are multifactorial and they include bleeding within the vertebral body as a result of the blood vessels. But there's also those blood vessels can grow and there can be bony expansion. And if you progress, you can even have bony progression such that it compromises the exiting nerve roots and the spinal cord. And then you can also have fractures of the building blocks, otherwise known as the vertebral body. The other symptom that you really need to know about are basically neurologic symptoms, numbness, weakness, bowel or bladder dysfunction, and that's due to the bony growth, expansion and irritation of the exiting nerve roots and or the spinal cord. This is a very serious condition and uh, with symptoms that it needs more likely than not um, immediate uh, medical attention and evaluation. So what are the exact causes of thoracic spine hemangioma? The exact cause is act not actually known. There are some risk factors associated with vertebral uh, hemangiomas and they include genetic, family dispositions, hormonal. What we know that there is a higher incidence in women than men. And then during pregnancy, there's a preponderance of women having an uh, increase in the size of the hemangioma during pregnancy. And then, of course, trauma. So what are the radiographic findings of a vertebral hemangioma? Basically, it's this bright signal on either T1 or T2, as depicted by the right arrow here. You often see them as an incidental finding on the MRI report, and many patients ask us. Now, on a CT, it's a little more uh, distinctive. It's called the corduroy um, cloth or the jail bar. And you can see that here depicted to the right. So I forgot the H, so it's a corduroy cloth. You know those things that we wear in the winter when it's cold? Or the jail bar, and I have no association or familiarity with it being in jail. And on axial cut for a CT, it's got this unique uh, polka dot or salt and pepper appearance, which is also depicted here to the right. So the treatment options for 
vertebral hemangiomas vary, and they depend upon the severity of the symptoms and the presence or absence of neurologic symptoms. For pain, the treatment options are as follows. Again, these are treatment options for pain only. Number one, observation. If it's not very symptomatic and very few uh, symptoms, you can uh, agree to observe on a regular basis and follow up with neurologic evaluation and radiographic imaging. You can also opt for pain management in either lifestyle changes, physical therapy, oral analgesics. You can also undergo radiation as depicted to the right. It's basically where there's a focused high energy beam of radiation to the target, the hemangioma, in an effort to shrink the tumor. Other treatment options for simply pain includes embolization. Basically, a catheter is advanced in, uh, through the blood vessels to the area of hemangioma that, that supply it. And then there's uh, embolic or basically clotting uh, that stops the blood flow such that the blood supply to the hemangioma is reduced or eliminated. And in doing so, the hemangioma can shrink. The other option is if there's vertebral collapse or vertebral fracture, you can have a vertebroplasty or kyphoplasty depicted here to the right. It's basically uh, two similar procedures. The one depicted here is through a needle, you inject cement and provide stability and structure to the collapsing or fractured vertebral body. Now, treatment options for cord compression are different. And it's depicted here, and I hope this makes sense. This picture here is a cross-section of the spinal canal and cord. Um, here is the spinal canal, and as we know on previous discussions, it houses the cerebral spinal fluid as well as the spinal cord. If the vertebral hemangioma expand, uh, extends posteriorly, you can get compression of either the cord and or the exiting nerve roots. In the presence of neurologic symptoms, oftentimes surgery is needed. The exact surgery will depend upon the symptoms and the location of the hemangioma, and it may include a decompressive laminectomy, uh, removal of the vertebral body, and or fusion. Now, what's important to understand is patients with hemangiomas may actually have thoracic pain that are coming from another entity. That's to say they may have ligament injuries creating thoracic spine instability. They may have facet injuries, disc injuries, and nerve root ir irritation with uh, pain radiating across their chest and flank, otherwise known as radiculopathy. So even though a patient may have a hemangioma, one must think and evaluate these other entities so as to address the pain. Treatment options, uh, regenerative, include uh, PRP, prolotherapy, and bone marrow concentrate, which is rich in uh, stem cells. So in summary, a thoracic vertebral hemangioma is a common benign tumor. It's primarily asymptomatic. Pain and neurologic symptoms are the most common symptoms when they are symptomatic. But it's critical to understand and appreciate that there are other coexisting thoracic conditions that can be causing the pain, and therefore they warrant, warrant evaluation. Thoracic spine pain, it's a big deal and it keeps many, many people to the sideline. At the Centennial Schultz Clinic, we are experts in the evaluation and the treatment of thoracic pain. Give us a call if you or a loved one are on the sideline or continue to suffer. Regenerative therapies offer many opportunities, but they also offer, offer the opportunity to avoid dependence on oral medications, including narco narcotics and dependence, and the significant complications associated with surgery. I hope this was helpful. You learned a little bit about thoracic vertebral hemangiomas what they are, the treatment they're in, 
Again, if you have a loved one or if you suffer from thoracic pain, consider a, a telemedicine consultation. Thank you so much for your time today.